Okay, so we're starting with a very basic FPS controller that I have here. We're going to be adding a pistol and making it so that we can fire it with the left mouse button. This video is going to be just setting up the model and using the animation player. Um, we can use the animation player to control the rate of fire and create the effects that make it look like we're firing a pistol. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, we're going to start by creating a new scene and calling the root spatial node pistol. I'm going to add this pistol model to the scene. I've got this model from Quaternius's CC0 Ultimate Gun Pack on itch.io, links in the description. It comes with the source blend file, so I've turned this one into a GLTF to make it a little easier to work with. We'll bring it into the scene and take ownership of the mesh. Next, we'll add an animation player, but before we go any further, I'll rotate this model around to face in the negative Z axis, which is the same as the camera. Then we'll add an animation to the animation player and call it Kick. We'll key the current position at zero and make it the starting position. Change the animation's length to 0.2 seconds. Remember the length of the animation will be our rate of fire. At 0.05 seconds, key a 45 degree tilt on the Z axis and then return it to the start position at 0.2 seconds. Okay, next we're going to add the sound. I've got a 9mm pistol sound from freesound.org. I've cut it a little bit to make it work a bit better with our gun. We'll name it Shot and drag our sound into the stream and set the volume to negative 12 dB as it's quite overpowering. We'll key the playing option to the animation player at 0 seconds. I'm going to leave mine set off for now, so I don't have to keep listening to it while we work. Next, we'll add a particle effect for the muzzle flash. Move it so it's at the end of the barrel. And add a quad as the mesh. Add a particle to the process material and you should start seeing a grey square drawn into the scene. You might have to search a little for it. Rotate this so it will be visible when we view it from the left. Change the amount to 1 and set gravity to 0. We should also change the size to something a bit more realistic, like 0.1 for the quad size. Add a spatial material to the mesh and drag it and drop a muzzle flash texture into the albedo slot if you have one. I got mine from Kenny. Rotate to suit the direction of fire. Under flags, make sure to check transparent. Then choose a color that suits your model. Under emission, check enable and set the emission color and strength. You might need to play around to get something you like. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger and position it somewhere that looks okay. Remember it'll only be viewed from behind so make sure to check that angle regularly. I'll rename mine flash and add another particle for the shell. Under the draw pass choose cylinder mesh and add a particle in the process material like before. They'll be quite big but we can change that. Rotate the cylinder to match the orientation of the pistol and let's adjust the size of the shell. We'll make the radius 0.1 and the height 0.05, which is still not quite right, but let's position this shell and then adjust the radius down to 0.01. We want to release this when the pistol is at its height. So we'll move the animation to 0 0.05 seconds and readjust the position. Okay, now we just need to change the direction of the gravity to the z-axis, I think. Uh, and make it negative 9.8. Then we'll add a direction force to the shell so it pops out before it starts falling. You can control this with velocity. 
that's looking good already. Just the force height enough that it will leave the screen before the end of the animation. I'll make mine 4 and I'll reduce the spread which is kind of like a variation or randomness factor. We don't want the shells going forward so reduce that enough that we still get a good amount of variation but they don't fly too far forward. Adjust the amount down to 1 and make this particle a one shot so that it does not repeat. Key the emission box as a keyframe to our animation and then make sure to check it as emitting in the animation. We'll do the same for the muzzle flash. Don't forget to make the lifetime suit the animation time. We want these particles to only emit during the animation. Otherwise, when we play it again, if the player is shooting in succession, the particles won't play in time. Okay, I'll set the audio to playing and we're just about done with the model. Let's add a script to control this animation. We'll need to access the animation player. Then we'll create a function called shoot. And all this will be for now is a boolean to check if the animation is playing, then not to run anything. Else, we want the animation to play. So now whenever we call this function, we can only shoot once the animation has finished. We will call the animation with the play function. Also, to give a bit of variation to our ears, we can alter the pitch of the sound. We'll access the audio player called shot. Then we'll call set pitch scale and set it to be a random float between 0.7 and 0.9. And obviously I've got the name of my variable wrong here, so I'll just fix that. Now we can save this scene. I'll put mine under the character weapons folder of my project. Then we can go over to our character and add the pistol to the scene. I'll add it as a child of the camera and check preview on the camera and just choose a nice position for the pistol. Once you're happy with that, we can add a few lines of code to trigger the gun on our player controller. Get access to the pistol with a variable. I'll call mine, gun. And in the physics process, we'll check for the input of the left click button. Which is an input I set up earlier. If that input is pressed, we'll call the function gun.shoot. Now we should be able to test this out in a scene from my previous video. And it looks okay. I'm not playing the audio for you here because I was silly enough to film this tutorial with licensed music playing in the background. Um, so I'll play a short bit here to show it's working. Anyway, there's a few things to tweak. I'm going to try parenting the flash to the gun and then playing with the particle scale. I'll just turn off one shot and make it emitting so I can see the effect. Under scale, we can add a curve to control the size of the particle. 
We'll tweak this so it grows and shrinks over the life. It's very short, but it should make it look a bit better. Let's test this out. And it looks a bit better than before. Of course, you can tweak this until you're happy with it, but I'm going to move on. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is that the shells aren't always making it off the screen before they despawn. Uh, we can adjust a few things to make that work a little bit better. It also needs a material, so it's not plain white. We can add a spatial material and adjust the albedo to make it more copper looking and add some metallic and smoothness as well. Then we're going to add a bit of force away from the gun, so it pushes the shells backwards more. I'll add one to the Y direction and turn the emission on to C. And it looks like we're going the wrong way, so I'll just change this to negative one, or maybe negative 0.5. Once you're happy, we can change the particle back to one shot and test it out. Okay, I'm happy with how mine looks. How did you go? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe because next we're going to be actually setting up the hit scanning and registering a shot with the engine. That'll be out in the next day or so, so keep an eye out for it. Thanks for watching, I'm Isaac, I am ChefDev, and I'll see you next time.